Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're talking about Sam Darnold and why it looks like his career might be going downhill. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps me out a lot. Sam Darnold was born in Dana Point, California, where he grew up playing basketball, baseball, and football. Darnold was actually named the South Coast League MVP twice in his high school basketball career. He was so good that it was said he could actually be a starter in the Pac-12 conference playing basketball. Of course, however, as we all know, he decided to focus on football. Darnold, believe it or not, actually played as a wide receiver and a linebacker. Yes, Sam Darnold was out there tackling running backs. However, in his junior year, he actually did make the switch to quarterback, but he was mostly injured that year. However, in his senior season playing for San Clemente High School, he passed for 2,985 yards on 68% completions, with 38 touchdowns to just 8 interceptions. He even rushed for 785 yards and 13 more touchdowns on the ground. He finished high school ranking as a 4-star recruit and ranked as the 8th best dual threat quarterback. He was a 179th best player overall in the nation for the 2015 class. His rankings were hurt due to the fact that he only had one real true year as a starting quarterback in high school. His high school coach actually used his basketball highlights and footage to show college recruits how great of an athlete Darnold was. He received multiple offers from schools like Oregon, Utah, Duke, Northwestern. However, after a football camp, he actually decided on signing with the USC Trojans. When Sam Darnold arrived to the USC campus as a freshman, the defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox actually asked Darnold to play linebacker. Darnold said no and ended up redshirting his freshman year behind Cody Kessler and Max Brown. Going into his sophomore season in the 2016 year, Darnold was second on the depth chart. However, after USC started the season 1-2 and two and looked pretty shaky, they looked to Darnold to help jumpstart the team. He lost his first start 27-31 to the Utah Utes, but then he would lead the Trojans to 9 straight victories as the Trojans would not lose another game the rest of the season. This includes victories over number 4 Washington and number 5 Penn State. Against Penn State in the Rose Bowl, Darnold threw for 453 yards and 5 touchdowns. This would end up being a huge moment for his career and one of the best USC seasons in years. Darnold ended up finishing his freshman year passing for 3,086 yards on 67% completions with 31 touchdowns to just 9 interceptions. USC finished the season ranked 3rd in the final AP poll. This was their highest finish in the poll since the 2008 season where Pete Carroll was still the head coach. He then followed this up with his redshirt sophomore year where he didn't have quite as good of a year. USC had new receivers and multiple injuries, but despite this, he still passed for 4,143 yards on 63% completions for 26 touchdowns, but he did have 13 interceptions. However, he still led USC to an 11-3 record, losing to Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. He had another great year overall, which had him pegged as a high first-round draft pick. So this leads us to the 2018 NFL Draft where the Cleveland Browns had the first overall pick. Now there was a huge debate about who they would actually take, Baker Mayfield or Sam Darnold. Most people, most analysts, almost everyone thought that they were going to take Sam Darnold number one overall. There were a lot of fears that Baker Mayfield was going to be Johnny Manziel 2.0 and that Sam Darnold was a safer pick for the Cleveland Browns. However, as we all know, they ended up selecting Baker Mayfield with the first overall pick. Now, at the second pick, the New York Giants could either take generational running back Saquon Barkley or Sam Darnold. The thought process here was that they could groom Sam Darnold, he could learn behind Eli Manning before he retired, and that they would have their quarterback for the future. But, the Giants decided to choose Barkley as they really believed Eli Manning had a few more good years ahead of him and that he could help them win now. That didn't quite work out, but of course, as we all know, they now have Daniel Jones as their quarterback. But that left us with the third overall pick with the New York Jets, and yes, they would select Sam Darnold third overall. So first and foremost, I'm just going to say this. This was the most crucial initial moment of Sam Darnold's career so far. If he had gone to Cleveland, or especially the New York Giants, I don't think I would even be making this video right now. 
That being said, Sam Darnold signed a four-year, $30 million contract going into his rookie NFL season. In week one of his rookie season, he became the youngest opening day starting quarterback since the AFL-NFL merger in 1970 at just 20 years old. But let's be real, the Jets were a terrible football team and that's why they had the third overall pick in the draft. So Darnold did struggle and had a very up and down rookie season. He ended up passing for 2,865 yards on 58% completions with 17 touchdowns to a very high 15 interceptions. He started 13 games and in those games he led the Jets to a 4-9 record. Darnold had games where he did look pretty good, but overall he was a turnover machine as he had multiple games with more than 4 turnovers. Of course, many of these games he was running for his life due to the poor talent around him, the offensive line, not having a lot of great receivers, and this led to the firing of Todd Bowles after the season, who in 4 years with the Jets, only had a 24-40 and 40 record, but in his last 3 seasons he was just 14-34 and 34 with the Jets. So this leads us into Sam Darnold's second NFL season, the 2019 NFL season, where the Jets hired Adam Gase, who was coming off three very mediocre seasons with the Miami Dolphins. If you follow the NFL at all, you know just as well as I do that Gase is not the guy for this job. So many people said that he has a great offensive line, but I personally think it was a terrible decision to hire an unproven head coach when you're trying to rebuild a team. This is one of the contributing factors to Sam Darnold is that the front office and management doesn't seem to have any idea what they're doing. So many players have ran away from this franchise because of decisions like this, like hiring Gase. However, all of that being said, Sam Darnold did have a better season as he only played in 13 games again, but he led the Jets to a 7-6 record in the games that he did play in. He passed for 3,024 yards with 62% completions, with 19 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, and he also had 11 fumbles on the season as well. So he played better, but again, the Jets were not a good team. The offense was ranked 31st in the league in points per game at just 17.3 points per game. And their strength of schedule ended up actually being one of the easiest in the league, so even though they had an easy schedule, they were 7-9 and and Darnold still wasn't taking them to the next level. The Jets started the season 0-4 before finishing 7-5, but again, that was against mostly bad teams. Still, there was hope that they were taking the next step up, that they were 7-9, they were close to a winning record, Sam Darnold looked improved, if they can get more offensive line help, more wide receiver help, maybe they could turn this thing around. But as of this video, halfway through the 2020 NFL season, the Jets are 0-8. They have the worst offense in the league by far, scoring just 11.8 points per game. In what the league is today, which is a very offensive-focused league, 12 points per game is absolutely insane. Darnold has played in 6 of the 8 games, passing for 1,045 yards with just 58% completions, and an atrocious 3 touchdowns to 6 interceptions. Yes, the Jets are a disaster. But if we're being honest, besides the two AFC Championship game appearances in 2009 and 2010, the Jets haven't really been good consistently since the late 1990s, early 2000s. But even then, the Jets have never really done much. They won a Super Bowl back in 1968 with Joe Namath, but since then, they have never really found consistency throughout the years. Now, yes, they did have to deal with Tom Brady for basically 20 years, but this is a dysfunctional franchise that could be ruining Darnold's career before our very own eyes. I have already done a what happened to video about Josh Rosen, another quarterback that has gone through similar circumstances. It just seems that these terrible teams throw their top draft picks at quarterbacks hoping that they're gonna magically hit a switch and turn the franchise around. What franchises have to learn is that you can't just draft a quarterback and think everything's gonna magically fix itself. You have to give them proper support. Darnold has looked very bad this year and it looks like he's completely regressed. The Jets and even the Jets fans have been asking for them to just tank, fire Gase, and draft Trevor Lawrence. Now you true Jets fans out there, let me know in the comments below, is this what you want? Do you still believe in Sam Darnold? Is it Gase's fault? What's going on? It's kind of crazy to me because I think Darnold has a lot of talent and he's been put in a franchise that is just completely dysfunctional and it's hurting him. The Jets don't have any clue how to build a team, and drafting another quarterback high in the draft is not going to solve the issues of the franchise itself. They need a general manager and a head coach who can change the culture of the team from top to bottom. 
I personally think it's too early to give up on Sam Darnold. Remember everyone, he didn't really become a quarterback until his senior season in high school. And he only played two full-time seasons in college. But as always guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I wrong? I mean, I think we can all agree that the New York Jets franchise needs a foundational change. They're a disaster right now. And they're in New York, a huge market in America, but just can't seem to ever leave the shadow of the New York Giants. What do you think needs to be done to save Sam Darnold's career? Does he need to go to another team? Can they hire a new staff to fix the issues that's going on? Let me know, do they just tank for Trevor Lawrence and cross their fingers thinking that he's going to save everything? I personally think they need to fire Gase first and hire a head coach and an offensive coordinator that can bring out the best in Sam Darnold. And of course, give him the talent to be successful with a great offensive line and wide receivers. I've been wanting to make a video about the New York Jets in general for a while now because it just seems like since I've been watching football since I've been born that the Jets just can't get it together. And this of course is coming from a Dallas Cowboys fan who's had to be miserable my entire life. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos in the future. Also, drop some names in the comments below. Who should I do my next video on? And as always everyone, I'll see you in the next one.